Welcome back. Today we're in Bardstown, Kentucky, the home of Bourbon and BTR. Hey Brian. Hey, good morning. Thanks for the opportunity. Welcome to BTR. I'm looking forward to seeing the factory. You've got a, an awesome facility, so let's let's check it out. Yeah, very proud of what we've uh, what we have here. So the warehouse looks fantastic, Brian. You know, we first moved in here around 2017, and then within just a few years, added the mezzanine. What's incredible, though, is the the BTR story. It's it's on a rapid rise, isn't this? out of your basement. Right, yeah. Started in 2012, moved out of the basement in 2014 into the uh, building across the street. We were there 14, 15, 16, then moved into this in 17. The products absolutely perform and, and that's what makes BTR so popular. Yeah, we've been very blessed. Uh, of course, you know, we started with valve springs in the basement. That was the start and honestly, I was just gonna sell some spring kits and maybe some push rods and then it turned into uh, people asking me for camshafts and started doing camshafts. And one of the first cams, honestly, was a positive displacement supercharged cam for ZR1. And we've been um, doing some testing on that, which we'll share shortly. But camshafts were really the product that took BTR to the next level. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we spent a lot of time, obviously, through the years, I'd sold camshafts and tested camshafts and did all kinds of stuff. You know, I had a chassis dyno starting in 2001 when I bought a five axis CNC. By about 2010, when I was leaving Trickville Summit Racing, I created just calculated open close events, which really opened my eyes as to how to look at camshafts differently. Because everyone looks at intake duration, exhaust duration, lobe separation, advance, and those are derivatives of those open close events. You really had to focus on the open close events because as you're juggling these other four numbers you're talking about, mm. that intake valve close, you need that number to be within one or two degrees. And if you get it very far off, the camshaft's not gonna be happy, it's not gonna produce power. We've been very blessed with the camshaft development. We've had breakthroughs in 2020 and then again in 22. And uh, that's when I decided to buy the uh, CNC cam grinder. Well, let's go and have a look at the manufacturing process um, because it's in-house and that controls the quality and it's an impressive setup. It smells like I'm at home with machines and, and coolant. Right, yeah. We're in the engine room. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this is our Landis LT1E camp grinder. It's state of the art, best you can buy, hydrostatic ways, CBN wheel. It's absolutely the best camp grinder you can buy. It's funny because this is a million dollar cam grinder and sometimes people will try to save a hundred thousand dollars which is like spend the extra money get the best and the repeatability of manufacturing yeah exactly um, good machines make good parts absolutely yeah so this is what a camshaft ugl looks like now this is a gen 5 cam so you can see it's longer than these gen 4 cams so it comes in it's been roughed in as you can see still see the heat treat on the lobes, which is why it's still black. This is what the cam looks like straight out of the cam grinder. After it's ground, we polish it, which is a rim polishing or isotropic yep. finishing. It's a beautiful process, makes for a beautiful. The way you batch them through, there's real production efficiency, like from the UGL, the nesting, it's excellent throughput. We tend to grind 25 at a time. That's what our carts are made for. That's what our laser etcher is set up for. We laser etch 25 cams at a time it works pretty efficient. LS would be the most popular engine platform? Definitely, definitely. We're we're still amazed at how many LS truck cams we sell, yep. which when you consider they haven't made a, put a LS in a truck since 2013, it's pretty amazing. Mazak's a huge partner of ours. We've been using their machines for over 30 or 40 years. And our Variaxis is one of the most versatile in the shop. And You've got two of them. And yeah. One of the things that's important to us to be globally competitive when you're making products 100% in the USA is you have to be able to run lights out. We currently machine all of our Trinity intakes, equalizer intakes, valve covers, EVAP adapters, a lot of other small parts. I've noticed on the MPP, the multi pallet, there's a lot of engineering that's gone into that and maximizing the parts per pallet gives Absolutely. you more efficiency. Yeah. These red valve covers, yeah. they're a work of art. Our uh, resident genius, Rick Smith, designed the casting, designed the tooling to make that casting. We now have eight of these. So we machine nine valve covers at a time, which is awesome, because we were machining one valve cover at a time. So this Mazak is where we're running the cylinder heads. Uh, we still don't have production batch of castings yet. We only have samples. 
Rick and I, you know, our background is really cylinder heads. I mean, we've done great at camshafts and other things, but we know more about cylinder heads than anything else in the world. That's what I did for 25 years. And then I was lucky enough to hire a port development guy, a Paris Pugliese, who used to work for in Bowling Green to start with. You know, you and I have talked about how important people are relationship well, team is everything it's everything team is absolutely everything and so having yep. those guys that are so great at what they do yeah the engineering skill with the manufacturing skill is what's needed to to make amazing product so for the viewers give us the headline base features you have to think about these gen 3 gen 4 heads that we're making like a gen 5 head because it uses gen 5 lt1 intake and exhaust valve so it's two 125 159 valve diameters it's canted like a gen 5 head it even uses the one inch reach spark plugs like a Gen 5 head. There are cooling advantages with the way you can do the water jacket with that longer spark plug, which is why we did that. And even the valve guides are the OE Chevrolet LT1 powder metal valve guides, which is the only way to make a cylinder head. You should never make an aftermarket LS cylinder head with bronze guides unless you're planning on running solid roller because hydraulic roller is so sensitive to every gram of mass you just don't want to add roller rockers to that equation you need to run stock rockers and to run stock rockers you have to have powder metal guides oh the the dna of these heads is fantastic i think the market's going to respond incredibly well i think so too i feel like it's the most market dominating product i've ever released in my lifetime you know, we're really excited to see how the heads perform on a 5.3. Uh, we know on a 6.2, just taking stock 243 heads off, putting in our cathedral port heads on, we picked up over 100 horsepower because the 243 head is, is a pretty decent head. Obviously a little small for a 6.2. We don't have the 5.3 back in Australia, but I know it's just so popular here, both on LS and LT. So talking about testing, we obviously will do a 5.3 combination that we will be pretty spicy, but Parrot ran an L8T in Australia that used the Stage 2 BTR PD cam. Got some pretty great results with our top mount style LT supercharger. And I think that was 16 pounds. It was E85, standard displacement, rods and piston upgrade, factory heads. And that was 1,070 horsepower. So really healthy numbers on a basic combination. With a smallish yeah. cam. That's right. It's a pretty conservative sized cam shaft which should have great manners for street ability and, and daily use. Absolutely. And what's been great this week is spending some time with your engineering group doing some LT4 testing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. We're 1200 horsepower with your supercharger on our LT4. So looking forward to doing more testing, more camshaft testing, and maybe some other things that we do with the superchargers. Well, the combination, there's so much potential there. And the engine was a standard displacement. It had rods and pistons. We tried a number of different camshafts, but yeah, the performance potential on that LT4 package, and there's such a strong following for that platform now with Z01 and Z06 over here. Yeah, really healthy numbers. The other fantastic thing from this week, we did a sales training session with the sales team and the marketing team. BTR is a great partner now for Harrop. We've got the products getting put onto the website and I'm just excited to see what we can do with packages. You know, camshaft technology, cylinder head technology, power adders. Right. It's gonna be amazing for, for both of our customers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, cause we know how much power you can make with cams or heads or superchargers and yep. combining, you know, the best head available with an awesome supercharger and the right camshaft. No doubt, both of our businesses were about making customers' cars go faster. And I know you've got a couple of great builds in the race shop, so I'd be keen to yeah. check that out. Yeah, I consider the race shop my personal school because as I work on these cars and, and build them and see holes in the market, we have dual injector Trinity intakes, for example, that came from my personal cars. It's about identifying needs and then developing a solution. If you've got a need, you know there's other customers out there that can benefit as well. This is what I'm talking about, Brian. Workshop, three fast Chevys in the stable. Yeah. It looks yeah. like there's a bit happening. Yeah. This is uh, my, I call it my school, right? I come here and work on these cars and learn a lot. So how long have you had the C6? It looks like it's got some serious upgrades. I've actually had it about six years. So I've had it a long time to not have raced it yet. We've gone through a couple of iterations of what we wanted to do. We wanted to go class racing and decided we, we just weren't going to be competitive. And so we decided to... Um, just do drag and drive events. It's mm -hmm. got four radiators. It's got a 25.3 cage, still IRS, turbo 400, nine inch. 
it should be a, a fun drag and drop car. I know you've got the Australian Origins Noonan Billet LS engine. Mm -hmm. Yep, actually have a, a few Noonan Billet blocks. This has got the water block 427. It's going to be boosted. We've got a uh, Turbo 400 by RPM transmissions, nine inch certified to go 650. So it should be a fast car. That'll be a lot of fun. But the next car over the C7, it looks like it steps it up a level. It's a really serious car. Yeah, this car has been 380, 199 in the eighth mile. Wow. So a very serious car, 2,500 pounds. Like I said, billet Noonan 427, twin 88 turbos. Right now we've got three sets of turbos to test. It's a radial car, but it's it's run on big tires as well. Yeah, it's run on both. The long-term goal with this car is to switch it to hydraulic roller and, and try to reset the hydraulic roller record. Of course, one of our customers and, and friends, Kenny Dangler, owns that record right now. He's been 380s with a uh, 388 hydraulic roller with cathedral port heads, no less. So pretty, pretty impressive what he's done with that car. Wow. So we're hoping we can go, uh, you know, reset that record. When I went down the path of uh, purchasing this car, you know, my goal wasn't to, to go reset a customer's record. It was to uh, reset somebody else's record, right? So. Well, that's the nature of racing. Like records are there to be uh, yeah. broken. And the Camaro, not quite as hardcore and radical as the race car. But Definitely, yeah. This one's just naturally aspirated. We eventually put our 230 cam in it, CID head supported by GPI, mm -hmm. milled to 14 to 1. We eventually made 740 horsepower at the crankshaft NA with the Trinity 4-inch intake. Uh, the 6-inch makes about the same peak power. It just falls off a little faster than the 4-inch, but obviously it adds torque for the street. So pretty excited about the 6-inch offering. Pure Performance has built the transmission and we have a Pure Performance converter. I had a 2019 01 that we eventually made 1100 tires with and went 870s in a quarter. I would like to do the same sort of thing with this car, put a built bottom end in it, uh, good heads, you know, your supercharger, uh, like we've been testing on the engine. Well, the LT5 uses the same technology. It's the TVS 2650. I think it's a great target for this car to work towards. And you can check out our LT4 supercharger on the BTR website today, or talk to the knowledgeable sales team. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.